There's a storm going on outside right now. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I don't know if it's picking up. I bought this new microphone. It's supposed to be really good, but it's picking up all kinds of things. And the streets are flooding and the rivers are overflowing. And they're saying now that it's going to rain for at least another week. I'm not sure if I should be recording this or putting two of every animal on a boat. And the Amazon rainforest is on fire, man. It's not looking good for the world. Maybe this is it. Maybe the end has come. Maybe it's Ragnarök. Ragnarok, the fate of fates. Tell you what, though. It is Thursday. Thor's Day. That's what we call it in the north. When you're the god of strength and the god of thunder, you get to have your own day. That's what they always taught us when I was a kid, that he was the god of strength, not of thunder. And he had this belt that he puts on. And when he tightens it, he powers up and he becomes really powerful. And the lightning and the thunder comes later when he's fighting, when he's killing the giants and he's killing the trolls. As late as the early 1900s when lightning struck a hill in Sweden, people would say, there were trolls living up there and Lord Thor is out killing. It's pretty badass. People used to love Thor. He was the most beloved of the old gods because he was a blue-collar guy. He worked really hard. He was a man of the people. And when Ragnarok comes, Thor has to fight his nemesis, the Great Serpent. It's a snake that's so big, it's as long as the equator. It's this great monster and he fights it. But Thor is mighty and he wins and he kills it. But then he succumbs. That's a great word, by the way, that you don't get to use that often, succumbs. He succumbs to the venom of the snake and he dies. And his dad dies and everybody dies. And it's really sad. And all these monsters, they're Loki's children. Loki runs away and he has kids. He has relations with this giantess and all of their kids are monsters. And I hope that's not people being cruel about the fact that Loki kind of dated a fat girl for a while. It's not cool to call your friend's new girlfriend a giantess. I had a, I had a crush on a chubby girl once. And she was beautiful, man. Her name was Natalie. She was uh, half Danish, half Liechtensteinian, which is really weird. That's not a combination that I've ever heard of before. But she was really cool. She used to bite my lip really hard when we kissed and she had pierced nipples. And one day, I mean, I blew it. One day she got really drunk and she said that she wanted me to be her boyfriend. And I don't know why, but I got cold feet and I was like, I don't know. And she got sad and angry. I mean, it's probably embarrassing, right? And she threw something at me and I left and that was it. I don't think we ever talked again, but she was cool. Hope you're doing well, Natalie. Shoutouts to you and your pierced nipples. If this is the end of the world, does that mean that I don't have to follow my diet? I've been trying to eat better lately to help me focus. I've been struggling to focus. I honestly think I might be slipping. What did I have today? I had, um, oh, I had cornflakes this morning which made me feel really good for some reason. I almost never have cornflakes, but it made me feel really good. Uh, I felt sort of uh, sort of American, I guess, which is a really cool feeling when you're not American. It feels like strength. It feels like, um, it feels like freedom. I read a long time ago that cornflakes were invented by these two brothers who uh, ran an insane asylum together and they wanted to come up with some sort of really bland food to give the patients in the morning to make them less excited of all things. They didn't want them excited because once they got excited, they would start uh, jerking off, basically. And they didn't want them jerking off because they thought that made them worse. Maybe they were just tired of the cleanup. I mean, I can, uh, I can see that. But I thought that's so sad. You know, you have all these, these lords and ladies locked up and you're supposed to be making them feel better and then they're not even allowed to bust nuts. That's not going to solve any problems, is it? And I thought, 
Somebody should really break into that place. Some sort of freedom-fighting terrorist. Not to break them all out, just to bring them some exciting food, you know? Break in and give them some... I don't know what would be good. Maybe some... Uh, maybe some jambalaya. Maybe some taco rice, you know? Get them that spice in life. And then... Then when the orderly show back up in the morning, people are just coming everywhere. Coming on the walls, coming on the ceiling. Coming on their cornflakes. If that's what you want to do. I think that's a right you have. You're a sovereign creature. Just make sure you get uh, a lot of pineapple in your diet, you know. So you can get those vitamins in the morning. Now you're probably thinking, when is he going to get to Tekken? And I probably... Well, at some point, because it's something that's on my mind a lot, but I'm doing something different in this video because while well, I went past 20,000 subscribers on my channel recently, and it kind of messed with my mind a little bit. Don't get me wrong, I'm super grateful and, and super happy, but I sort of felt like I didn't know what I was doing, that I should be uh, trying harder and doing more. And so I started reading my comments because I want to hear from you guys. I, I want to know what I should be doing better. And the big one is get a better microphone, which I have now. And hopefully this is sounding pretty good. If it isn't, then it's my fault. I'm not using this microphone properly. I haven't done the, the settings right or whatever, but it's supposed to be something pretty special. And I'll figure it out eventually. But the other one is that you guys want to interact more, you know. I don't want to get a Twitter. And I don't want to get a, an Instagram. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't even exactly know how those things work. And they kind of, uh, they kind of frighten me a little bit. But I do want to interact more with you guys. And I do want to, you know, build a little bit more of a sense of a community. So this is my solution. I decided to, to try and do a podcast. And I know there are all these YouTubers who uh, are known for doing one thing. And then they try to do a podcast and nobody sees it, you know, nobody's interested um, and that's fine. I'm kind of prepared for this to be the exact same thing. And I don't really mind. Um, it's sort of just, you know, for the few people who are interested in, in just talking, you know, and hanging out for a little bit. And uh, I think I'm going to leave it there and not really talk about the fact that I'm doing it anymore. Because the only thing that is less interesting than a tech and YouTuber doing a podcast is probably a tech and YouTuber apologizing for too long for doing a podcast. But I do want to talk more with you guys. And I want to know what's going on with you. I get all these great comments. You guys are so funny. I mean, I, I laugh so hard when I re read your comments all the time. And you're from all over the world. And it's pretty cool. So I want, to, I want to talk about you guys. I want to answer your questions. And I want to hang out a little bit more. And I want to commit to you guys a little bit. There probably won't be a merch store where you can buy you know a, a shirt with my face on it I don't think that's anything that anybody would ever want and I don't even know how to put the logistics together of something like a giveaway contest I mean I live so far away from everybody but um but we can do stuff like this but yeah I've been trying to focus more lately and I feel like I'm losing it a little bit this girl walked up to me the other day and her her t-shirt threw me off um, to the point where it took me a couple of hours to find my way back to reality. I wasn't prepared for that shirt. She walked up, this uh, this girl, she had uh, high-rise mom jeans on, which I guess is the fashion here in Japan right now, and a white t-shirt that she had tucked in. And it had this really aggressive message across the chest in big black letters. It said, um, Who is the betrayer? question point exclamation mark and the first thing I thought is wow I hope it's not me but then I laugh because that's a that's a funny shirt right and it's one of the perks of living in Asia you get to see a lot of funny shirts and funny posters and funny bags because people love English they think it's so cool I mean it's the same in Sweden people think English is really cool because I think well English is pretty cool but they don't really speak it you know so there's a lot of Google Translate and a lot of fun messages. And it said, who is the betrayer? And then I chuckled and I said, it's a cool shirt you have. And she said, really, what does it say? 
and I explained and she laughed and she said, wow, that's such a, that's such a weird message. But I kind of like it, you know, because it's really weird. And I said, yeah, I think it's cool. And we talked for a bit, but then when she turned away to walk away, you know, that's when the shirt really stepped it up to the next level and threw me a curveball and I was not prepared because I'd been thinking that it was, you know, uh, a stupid shirt, but uh, turns out that the shirt was a, a lot cleverer than me or a lot cleverer than I because across the entire back of the shirt was a print of The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci and there is of course a famous betrayer somewhere in that picture I think it's the guy with his um with his elbows on the table which is a big hint by the way because that's just you know bad table manners but um I read this book when I was in junior high it's a very famous book it was called uh Dante's Inferno and it wasn't because I wanted to it's not because I was a clever kid and I wanted to read difficult books. I just wanted people to think I was a clever kid who read difficult books. So I would sit in the school cafeteria with some old book and read it so that people would think, you know, he's a clever guy. And I thought maybe if I do that at some point, maybe somebody will like me. Maybe somebody will kiss me. But I read this book and it was a very easy read because Dante's Inferno is, is very epic. It's kind of like a fantasy story. It's kind of like a video game. I think they did turn it into a video game. But it's a three-part story. There's a, a part about heaven, a part about purgatory, and then a part about hell. And the one about hell, Inferno, is the one that everybody remembers because, of course, hell is a lot sexier than the other two. I'm going to have a drink here. I hope that doesn't pick up. But in that book, Dante sort of describes his journey into hell and he thought that hell was this spiral this pit that gets deeper and deeper and the further down you go the more depraved the souls become the deeper the sins become the more guilty the people are and when you get to the very bottom the bottom of the pit of hell it's this frozen landscape it's like an icy lake and uh, the devil himself is sort of frozen into the middle of it and his torso is sticking out and he, he's like a big monster and he has three big heads and in each of his heads, each of his mouths, he's sort of chewing on one of the three worst people in all of human history according to Dante, the three most guilty sinners who ever lived. And one of them is that guy with his elbows on the table in that shirt. So it was a pretty clever shirt after all. You know, Dante thought that the worst thing you could ever do, the, the deepest sin you could commit was to betray the trust of others. He thought that was worse than murder. He thought that was worse than theft. And I thought, what happens to you in life? that you believe that, you know. Dante must have been betrayed by somebody really special. Apparently he had kind of a creepy crush on a really young girl. And he was kind of writing these really epic books, trying to impress her. Maybe sort of like how, how I was trying to impress the girls in my school by reading the books that he wrote. Now, I want to get to something really cool that happened to me yesterday, and I also want to get to answering your questions, but before that, we need to take care of some quick business, so uh, here's a message from our sponsors. The first ever Frame Whispers podcast is brought to you by Aliens from Outer Space. They are beaming the podcast into your mind from their home planet in an attempt to control you emotionally. If you're hearing this message, this is your subconscious speaking, you need to wake up. Wake up and fight. Fight them in any way you can. There is still time for you. Go to alienmindprobe.com and enter promo code FRAME for 5% off your first and last lobotomy. All hail King Louis. My sister went to the hospital yesterday and she 
gave birth to a baby boy. My nephew, that's how that works. And they're going to call him Louie. They're both doing okay, which made me really happy. I was worried, you know, I worry a lot. But uh, I guess I also kind of struggle with intimacy because my family has been sending me all these photos of him and I, I haven't been able to look at any of them yet because while I am really happy that he's doing okay and that he's here now, I can't really deal with, you know, the the blood and the gunk and the, the sweat and some little creature sucking on my sister's titties. To me, that's just like a, that's like a nightmare. And I don't get that sort of sparkly miracle of life feeling that you're supposed to get when a child is born. I never have and I, I hope that doesn't make me cold. I really do hope that doesn't make me cold. I think it's because when I was a kid, I was into sci-fi stuff and I watched movies like Alien really before I knew about how kids are made. And then my mother got pregnant with my sister and she bought me this book. It's a famous book where a guy takes photos inside of the womb of a pregnant woman and she said, look, this is what is happening inside of me now. And it traumatized me permanently because there was this little half-formed being sifting nutrients from my mother's bloodstream using a tentacle attached to its abdomen and it had a heartbeat and it was, it was moving around in there and it really scared me. But welcome to the world, Louis. I hope it's still working by the time you grow up. I hope it's still here. I hope you don't grow up into a kidnapping pyromanic orangutan. Did you know that the Jungle Book is set in a part of the world that has literally no jungles? I hope you don't grow up into a half Mexican yet somehow also ginger stand-up comedian and that you tank your entire career by jerking off into some potted plants. I hope they don't execute you, Louis, somewhere in France, decapitate you because your wife made some Jokes about cake that were in poor taste. I hope you grow up funny and that I get to talk to you a lot. Maybe I can teach you about talking. I, I talk a lot. Too much. But who knows, the world is ending and Ragnarok is upon us, so maybe I never do get to meet you. Speaking of the earth, I went to this meeting yesterday because my friend is a very talented video producer. He makes these beautiful videos, like music videos, and he puts them on the internet. And unlike me, he's very good at it. And he's got a great camera and he's got a drone. And drones really scare me as well, but he got contacted by this model, this beautiful girl who wants him to make a video about her. And my friend is a very good guy and he's very innocent and he was looking through her stuff and she obviously has this really intense energy about her. So he was a little bit apprehensive and he asked me to go with and I did. And we met up with her in a bar in town yesterday and we had so much fun. She's really cool. She was really funny. And we're going to do this project together. And she's a dancer. She does this beautiful, special dance that's from, I guess, some one of the Pacific Islands. I don't know exactly where. I think it's the kind of thing you see in a movie like Moana. I'm not sure. I haven't seen that movie. But you put on like a grass skirt and you shake your ass really hard and really fast. And if you go to a contest or a tournament, the faster and harder... And longer you shake your ass, the more points you get. And I thought, that's such a good idea. But we're going to do this thing and we needed to find a location. So I asked her, you know, what's the, the meaning of this dance that you do? What's the point of it? And she said, it's about sort of being grateful to nature, you know, and the trees and the earth. So we knew we had to go somewhere in nature. And we found this place. There's an island near where we live, you have to go there by boat, but it has these ancient trees with big 
thick trunks and it has sandy beaches and we're going to go there, I'm going to get torches. We're going to have firelight and we're going to have her dancing in the sunset and it's going to be really cool, I hope. And I want to get her like, I want to get like seawater on her and I want to get sand on her so that she's not like all clean and pretty. I want her to sort of have a little bit of nature plastered on her, you know? And I hope it's going to be really cool and maybe when it's done, I'll share it somewhere on the channel. Maybe I won't. I probably won't. It's not what my channel is about, but... But yeah, speaking of tech, and let's get to some questions. I've been looking through my recent videos and I've picked out some questions that I want to talk about here. Obviously, if I make any more of these, I will look here first for like topics to talk about and questions to answer. So if you want to let me know what's going on with you, if there's anything you want me to talk about, then definitely write it here and hopefully I'll get to it. I'll, I'll definitely read everything. But uh, the first question is from Gabe Trinidad and he asks, how awesome would it be if John Wick was a guest character in Tekken? And that would be pretty awesome. I actually re-watched the John Wick movies with a friend of mine just recently and we we both really like them. They're well made and the music's really cool. And Keanu Reeves has so much goodwill right now. Everybody wants him to be in everything. And I guess that's cool because he seems to have been working on being a good person for a really long time. And he has really good karma. And it is cool when great things happen to great people, you know. And I saw the other day that they're making a, a Matrix 4 because of course they are. And I don't know how I feel about that. You know, I'm, I'm kind of paranoid about technology and stuff. And so the first Matrix movie was huge for me. I loved that film. I, I thought it was so good. And then the other two were pretty good as well. I don't remember that much about them, but I know that there's a, a really long scene where a guy is like making a girl cybernetically come really hard by giving her chocolate cake that is way too good. Does that dra <laughs> does that happen or is that a dream I had? But I think that happens and it's like this weird fetish scene and I didn't hate it, I guess. It's a pretty bold thing to put in a movie like that. But yeah, Matrix 4, do you think it's gonna be good? Who do you think should direct it? I don't think it's gonna be the, the same people who made the, the other three. We'll have to wait and see. I watch a lot of movies. I really love film. I think it might be my favorite art form. And if I could go back and sort of redo my education, what I would want to do the most is be a screenwriter because I love film and I really love writing. And so I thought I should do a small segment when I do these podcasts where I give a, a quick film recommendation for something that I've seen recently. And it just so happens I saw something just the other day that I really, really loved. I thought it was so good. And not many people saw it when it was new and it was called Bone Tomahawk. It's not for everybody um, because it gets really quite dark and really quite creepy in some parts, but it's also laugh out loud funny. It's like a comedy for a lot of it. It's a Western and it's got Kurt Russell and Richard Jenkins. And I think Richard Jenkins might be my favorite comedic actor in the world. I was rewatching that Coen Brothers film um, burn after reading with my mother last year when I was back in Sweden and we were laughing ourselves to tears at Richard Jenkins and John Malkovich but Bone Tomahawk was really good it's got a very basic premise uh, it's a western set in a, a small western town and Kurt Russell is the sheriff and one night these Native American people this tribe they come into the town and they kidnap some of the people and so the next day, Kurt Russell sets out with a, a small party of, of men, kind of like on an adventure, I guess, to try and find and, and rescue these kidnapped people. But it goes really wrong and it goes really quite dark. And that's all I'm going to say. And if you're OK with movies that um, are a little bit offbeat and have uh, some scary elements and a little bit of gore in them, then I really recommend it. I thought it was so good. And one of the best films I've seen this year so far. But it's not new. I think it came out in 2015. So maybe check that out. The next question is, are you going to do a video on the storyline of Arslan Ash versus Knee at the Tekken World Tour? And the answer to that is no. And the reason is simple. I haven't watched a lot of those matches. And I don't know 
a lot of the storyline between those two. Uh, it might come as a surprise, but I actually haven't even watched the Evo finals yet, which I will. I will definitely get to it. But recently when I watch these big tournaments, what I tend to do is I watch them without sound and I skip through everything that isn't specifically the gameplay because I love the fact that Tekken has become this global phenomenon that everybody seems to love it so much. It makes me more excited about making videos about the game, but a part of me is also put off a little bit by the spectacle of the whole thing, if that makes sense. And I want to watch the tournaments because I, I want to see these great players and the techniques they use with their characters. And I'm not interested as much in, in you know, the commentary and, and the drama and, and everything else that goes on. And the commentary kind of gets in the way a little bit when I'm trying to really watch the game. So I don't know what the storyline is. Obviously, Arslan Nash has been doing very well. But I'll say this, though. I, I met both Arslan and Ni nee at Evo Japan this year, and they both seemed so nice, which I thought was really cool. I only talked to Ni nee very briefly. What happened was I was playing Tekken, and him and Chanel were sitting next to me, and then Ni nee got up and went somewhere, and he forgot his stick. It was still plugged in, and he left it on a chair, and there were so many people everywhere, and I was worried that somebody was going to take his stick, so I picked it up and sort of put it in my bag that I had under my chair. And then after a couple of minutes, he came running back and you could tell he sort of noticed that he forgot his stick. And I said, it's, it's right here, I've got it. And he said, oh, thanks, it's really nice. And that was the extent of my interaction with Ni. Nee. But I talked to Arslan a couple of times, once in the morning, um, and we talked about the fact that him and Ni nee were in my bracket. So, you know, what were my chances? But um, I said, when I get knocked out, which I will, I'm leaving knee to you. And then I ran into him later in the day near the bathrooms and I said, did you, did you play knee yet? How did it go? And he looked a little bit confused um, and I realized maybe it was a little bit rude because he said, um, yeah, I played knee on the main stage and I beat him 6-0. Didn't you see the match? And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry because what I'd done is I went into this little corner of the of the hall where there was a setup open where I could play Tekken because I wanted to practice for my next match and I hadn't been paying attention to the main stage and it was this super intense uh, match where Knee beats, or sorry, Arslan beats Knee like 6-0 and I'd completely missed it and I was like, I'm, I'm really sorry, congratulations, that's super cool. Uh, but Arslan seemed so nice. He was a very sort of uh, mild person, it seems like. That was my impression, if that makes sense. And I think it is great when great things happen to great people. So, you know, congratulations to him and all the success that he's had. I met a lot of cool people at that event. And I think the, the person who impressed me the most was probably Tana Kana. And the reason is she was probably the person who had the most attention on her. People were pulling her in all these different directions, wanting her to sign stuff, sign, you know, T-shirts, sign uh, fight sticks. She's in this really high stress environment because she's in a professional tournament and she has to do well. And then I think she's sponsored by Red Bull. So her manager was running up to her all the time. And if she finished a Red Bull, he would open another and stick it in her hand. And she had to constantly be sort of drinking Red Bull. And I thought, you know, you have all these people around you. You can't move anywhere. You have to do well in the tournament and you are jacked up on like 50 energy drinks but she still managed to be like super uh, humble and super nice. And I did that interview for the Blasted Salami with her because the Blasted Salami, they had uh, an interpreter who, uh, a professional guy who they called in, but the tournament uh, ran late and he had to leave and they didn't have anybody who could translate for the interview. Um, and I, so ju I just sort of offered to do it. And it was really cool because I got to talk a lot to the Blasted Salami Guys, I got to talk to um, Tana Kana and we had a lot of fun. So that was a great experience. And I'm really happy I went to that event, even though I didn't go very far in the tournament. And a part of me, you know, didn't like the whole experience because it was a, a big room with lots of people and lots of sound. And it's not the kind of thing that I do really well with. But 
I'm glad I sort of moved out of my comfort zone. And I think I'm going to go next year. It looks like they're going to do it in Tokyo. And, you know, if you don't like places with a lot of people, you really shouldn't go to Tokyo. Tokyo, the, the city of Tokyo has a larger population than the entire country that I was born in. And so it's kind of intimidating when I go there. But I, I mentioned that friend of mine who's a video producer earlier. And maybe we'll do a video where we go to Tokyo together, you know, in a group of friends. And we do a kind of road to Evo Japan sort of thing. I don't know. That could be fun. The last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is this word that's been on my mind lately. It's this word, uh, satisfaction. Mick Jagger famously couldn't get any, and I thought, if he can't get any satisfaction, then what are my chances? He's made how much money? Had sex with how many people? Is it 10,000? It might be 10,000. He might be one of the few people who's made love to 10,000 other people. It's like him and Genghis Khan. If you want to have a number with five digits, you either need to conquer Asia with your horse archers or uh, become a rock god, I guess. But the reason that word was on my mind is there's this guy at my office. There's a new guy in the office and he started walking up to me the other day in a weird way. He sort of checked his surroundings and then he started crab walking towards me like he was sneaking along a wall like some sort of ninja and then he came up to me and he put his hand up to his mouth and he started whispering like I was a sleeper agent he was trying to activate and I was ready for shit to go down at that point I thought he was going to ask me to go to the men's bathroom in 69 but what he said actually confused me even more because he asked me under his breath he said um are you um uh, are you satisfied with the amount of money that you're making right now? And that caught me off guard. And I answered kind of right away, sort of automatically. I don't know, but I just said, I don't think human beings get to be satisfied. And he laughed because that's a, a weird thing to say. And it felt good because it's fun to make people laugh. But I was thinking about that later that night. Why did I answer like that? And I realized it's because I... I probably think that's true. We don't seem to be built for satisfaction and it's something I'm trying to keep in mind because I have all these things that I'm looking forward to in the future, the future of Tekken, um, the future of this channel, you know, meeting my nephew for the first time and I want to be better at enjoying that sort of feeling of looking forward to things instead of just being anxious for them to happen because then they're going to be over. And when you reach a new rank in Tekken or the, the new season comes out and you have a new character, how long until that sort of fades and now you want the new stuff, now you want to level up even more and you want to go to the next place. You know, I, I want to be better at sort of enjoying the feeling of having bright things in my future. And I don't know, that's something I'm really trying to work on, I guess. And that's been the first episode of my little podcast you guys really need to let me know if I'm way off the mark with this one because I really can't tell if this is completely unenjoyable or what I should do differently but I I will probably commit to it a little bit in the sense that I want to make at least a couple before I give up if people don't seem to like it because this is sort of my attempt to commit to you guys a little bit more and to be a little bit more available I think the point of the YouTube channel is not the games that we play or me it's kind of the fact that all these people show up and get to talk to one another from all these different places in the world I think that is kind of special and I, I think about that a lot so if you have more ideas for things I could do things I could talk about different segments I should do um, questions for me questions for each other then definitely tell me about that and I will look at the comment section and I will uh, try to read absolutely everything but uh Thank you so very much for being here for this one and for spending some time with me. I hope you enjoyed it at least a little bit and I'm looking forward to talking to you guys again in the next video, which will be on uh, tech and which will be on video games. The patch notes for season three are on the way and I'm really looking forward to that. The first thing I'm going to do is read the patch notes and then go into the game and talk about those. And I'm going to bring this new microphone of mine. So hopefully those videos are 
um, decent, you know, in terms of audio quality. And then the patch is going to drop and we have to learn Zafina, we have to learn new combos, we have to learn about all the changes to the characters in the roster. So a lot of fun stuff in the future and I hope you decide to share some of those experiences with me. But for now, uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little bit and I'll see you guys in the next one.